Welcome back. Every generation of Canadians seems to produce only one or two hockey stars who dominate their game. Uh, Howie Morenz, Morris Richard, Gordy Howe, Bobby Orr. Uh, my next guest is closely, closely associated with another of those great names. Would you please welcome Brett Hull's father. <laughs> Do you want to explain why, why Brett's name is in the news a little bit more than yours right now? Well, more so than uh, winning on the winning team of the uh, Pee Wee Championship down in Quebec this past uh, uh, week. Uh, Brett's played a little more hockey than I have this year, and uh, the 12-year-old 12, the 12 uh, Winnipeg South Monarchs, the team that he was on, they did themselves proud in Quebec. They won every game that they played, and they came back victorious over teams from... Uh, all over Canada and the United States, so they did a great job. The Quebec tournament is a, is a, is a big deal. Did, did Brett himself do well? Is he a star of that team? Well, he tells me that he is. Some <laughs> he and his mother uh, gang up on me, and uh, they feel he, that he does a pretty good job. I have to uh, keep his head uh, the right size by telling him that uh, he could do better, but I will have to say that uh, Brett has all the tools to be a an up-and-coming hockey star. He just has to uh, lose a little bit of weight, that's all. He tends to be a little bit like his dad in that respect, that he, he doesn't push himself away from the table, but he also has to realize that uh, his dad worked a little harder than he did at his age. Really? I think that's true with all kids uh, now. We parents tend to spoil them a little bit. The kids today, as a matter of fact, I told them they were belly aching about not having a place to play uh, today and wanted me to take him over to the Winnipeg Arena and I told him why don't you do like I did when I was your age go down to the community club and shovel it off and they didn't uh, go for that <laughs> really I think I've just, I think I've shoveled enough snow in my life to cover half of Winnipeg <laughs> to get a spot to play let's talk about Brett's father, Bobby, and, and how you are, because that is what everyone wants to know. And will you be back in hockey this year? Will you be back ever? Well, I wish you hadn't put it like that. I, I certainly feel that I'll be uh, on skates possibly within another week or so. I don't really know. I just had the cast removed from my ankle uh, three days ago, and uh, I'm, I'm getting around pretty good. It's still swollen quite badly as maybe you could see and uh, it looks like I still have the cast on and the only thing I can wear is the clogs that uh, Ulfie and Anders got me over in, in Sweden but uh, that's the ankle I've, that has a, a, a sever or a cut Achilles tendon yes after I was injured in training camp and broke my wrist in a couple of places I was just getting back into the swing of things and I don't know maybe I played 15 or 18 games and just started to feel good again and uh this freak accident where I followed Elfie in over the blue line and a couple of guys took him out and I went to go around him and pick up the puck in behind and as they knocked him down he uh, it kind of catapulted his uh, his foot around and it sliced just between uh, my my skate and my pad and uh, severed the one tendon went right down and cut the bone and they had to go up my leg a little bit and to find the uh, the tendon they had to sew it back together but you will be back on skates I'm so quite sure. Yeah. What about your wrist, Bobby? Because there, there, there are, you know, the way sports writers love scuttlebutt, so I'd like to get it direct from you. The word is that your, your injured wrist, broken earlier this year, is not returned to full strength and that you will never again have, or do not now, have the, the, what is part one of your trademarks, that incredible wrist shot. Well, I haven't been able to try it out for the last five weeks. But in that time, I've uh, gained a great deal of mobility back in the wrist. I don't say it's 100% now, but uh, I'm sure once I get back playing and get exercising it and shooting the puck, that it's going to be as good as new. It isn't, uh, uh, it isn't 100%, as I said, but it's really close to becoming that. And I can't see that by the end of the season that it won't be real good. Might hit the stride right at playoff time. Hopefully. But the guy who... who 
The Jets are so popular in this town, and, and people, and, and you have helped to make them that popular, and you have helped a lot of people say there would be no WHA if you hadn't jumped from the Chicago Blackhawks. Do you, do you agree with that? No, I don't. I don't really agree with that. There were a lot of uh, people at uh, that time, five years ago, that were very interested and in, instrumental in uh, in making the WHA work. Uh, uh, of course, the fellow that uh, really caused me to defect was Ben Hatskin, who uh, I said thought defect says, was an ugly word. You just that's what you did. <laughs> well, I guess they called it defect. I don't know. Uh, Every time I go back to Chicago, they they claim that I have defected. I don't really know what it was. I think it was uh, uh, really a, a move that I had to make because they forced it. But anyhow, Ben Hatskin, I, I really liked Benny right from the beginning, and uh, everyone in Winnipeg pretty well knows Ben, and uh, he was a, the reason that I was able to to come to Winnipeg. And have you ever have you ever at all regretted? There were there were times when it got pretty tough the first two years. It was uh, it was rather demanding, and uh, I think more than anything, the the court litigation kind of got me down. I didn't think anything could really bother me mentally like that. But I sat in so many courtrooms and uh, uh, felt that uh, the judicial system uh, was the backbone of our our nation, uh, so to speak, and uh, saw those lawyers stand up there in front of the judge and just bald face lie right through their teeth to him and it kind of got to me that way uh, and all the all the waiting and waiting and and hoping that I was able to play it kind of got to me and I was run down uh, after those first two years I kind of run down a little bit and physically and physically and mentally and I guess I've regained uh, most of that back now I, I, I read a good. statement this afternoon that you made I think early last spring sometime about the fun had gone out of hockey for you, that it would turn into a, a really dreary thing. You had, it was hard to get up for games. And, you know. I don't know whether it was last spring because I really enjoyed last last winter in the playoffs. We really had a great bunch of guys and uh, it all worked together and we were able to bring the championship here to Winnipeg. Uh, what we all, well, there was, a, there was we all, a time though when you were said that the game had become dreary. Well, possibly. I don't know. I think that could have been during times when uh, when a lot of these goons were running around taking shots at uh, Anders and Ulfie and the rest of the guys that were putting money in their pockets. Uh, people sometimes uh, have very short memories and they don't realize that people come out to see guys like Ulf and Anders and Shu and, and the rest of the good hockey players in our club and, and uh, there wouldn't be a league, not likely, if it wasn't for guys like this and then for these people to be snowed by management and coaches to the point where uh, they are told to go out and intimidate and to put these people out of action, then that kind of got me down. And uh, I wondered why uh, myself, along with, uh, with the rest of the guys that played the game the way it should be played, would continue to, to create jobs for these imbeciles that uh, were used by the coaches and managers. Well, you sat out a day or sat out a game. Yeah, that was early. That. that was early last uh, last fall. You think that had any effect? I believe it did. Uh, I think that anyone that uh, that had uh, brains enough to have a change in attitude, it certainly helped. And I was doing it not for myself because I'd been through it for 20 years and it didn't make any difference to me. I was. Uh, I've been harassed for that long, and and I could take it for another year or two as long as I was going to play. But it was for for my children coming up and the uh, the rest of the the children in this community and all over the country mm. that uh, we should get a better attitude back in the game by coaches and players. And I, I think I've also also heard you quoted as you as as finding some fun back in the game because of. Of, you, you could talk about Alf Nelson and Anders Hegberg, and but there are how many Swedes on the Jets? Are there eight and two guys? I believe there are ten. I believe there are ten uh, Europeans altogether. What's the language of the dressing room? <laughs> <laughs> kind of Heinz, uh, Heinz 57 uh, variety. Uh, <laughs> aside can you from, speak Swedish? Can you speak any Swedish? I can speak a little bit, but I don't know whether. Uh, some, some of the some of the language there might be a few Swedes in the uh, in the community, and they might. <laughs> Did, did Nielsen and Hegberg, uh, your line mates, ever talk behind your back, do you think, and say, don't give it to the, the Golden Jet? 
I don't think those two kids know how to be uh, that way. They're just two of the greatest kids, not only great, great athletes, but just great people. And that's yeah. what makes them the great stars that they are. They're so unselfish that I know Alfie and Anners would rather give me an open net to put it in than put it in themselves. And and uh, uh, Alfie, is a, he's an awful card, and uh, he wonders after he gives us the open net uh, how good the pass was. Was it good enough to put in the open net? You know, and things like that. And, and he asked Anders one day, uh, Anders, how does it feel to uh, score 50 goals in open net? <laughs> <You know? laughs> he's, that, he's that type of guy. He keeps everything loose, but just a, a great, great kid, both of them. And uh, I, was only, I was really unhappy that I wasn't here to see Anders break the record. I was away. It was your record. Well, I you didn't care. I, was, I, f I wish that I could have been here to play with him more often to help him do it a little earlier. Okay, uh, just one one final question. You talk about them taking runs at, at the, the, the Swedish, the European members of, of the Jets, and who have made them uh, one of the most exciting hockey teams around. Do the do other youngsters, and we can finish where we've begun, take runs at the at the Hull boys just because they are the sons of Bobby Hull? Do they have to put up with a little extra? Well, oh, I I believe they do, and maybe they did earlier in their career when they came here. That uh, the name on their back might have been a little bit of a burden to them, but they handled it really well. I think the oldest boy, Bob, may have taken it to heart a little more than the other two because uh, he was older, and uh, and I maybe expected a little more of him, and he knew that, and uh, he wants to play so badly. And every time I talk about retiring, he s grabs me by the scuff of the neck, and he can now. I hope he isn't watching because he, he looks me in the eye right now and uh, he's, he's just 15 and uh, he says, you're not going to retire until I play with you. So he really, he really wants to play with me and, uh, and I think maybe it was tough on him for a while. But the second boy, Blake, he handles it really well. He's, uh, he's cocksure like his mother a little bit and he, nothing bothers him. And he's nothing, nothing bothers and him. And now Brett's a member of the, the championship, the Quebec championship. Brett, it doesn't bother him a bit. It just runs off his back like water off his In back. five years from now, could there be a Hull line the way there, there is a Hull family combination? Is that a possibility? I expect it could be. I, I think all the boys have uh, qualifications to make it. Uh, I, I can't see why with they just need a little bit of, a little bit of hard work. Well, Gordy, I'll be around for another five years. He can wait for you for sure. <laughs> <laughs> five years, fifty. Bobby, thank you so much you for know, coming by. Thank and you. Congratulations on, on your career and, and coming back to hockey. I was just going hockey. to say, I don't mean to interrupt you, but a cute story about how I think that how is so tough that when he dies, I think he may miss just a couple of games. That's what they say. <laughs>